Welcome back to the Green Room. I'm joined now by Karen, Colin, Alistair and Tom, who've just finished their lightning talks, some of whom got shot for running over. I mean, I, th I think actually um, Tom got the worst of that, but he deserved it. Got bruises um, on my bum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're just going to kind of uh, have a little bit of a, a group discussion about, uh, about what the, the subjects that were brought up during, uh, during the talks. Um, if I can, uh, uh, I think, kick it off with you, uh, Tom, if that's all right. Um, the notion of the cliché. Mm. And, and you argued very strongly that people should still make pictures of those places. Absolutely. It's right, because uh, they're a cliché because the end result of those things is a lot of photographs on social media. So there are thousands of photographs of Yosemite, of uh, the Hebrides, of wherever. But that doesn't matter. If it's you taking your photograph, it's your experience, it's not a cliché to you. If you go to uh, the Antelope Canyon, which is uh, a, uh, a difficult place to photograph because the number of people there, but if you go there, it's your experience, it's your photograph. Doesn't matter whether it's been seen uh, 100,000 times on social media before, it's your experience. I think that's a, a lot of what we were hearing in some of the, uh, the, uh, the talks that, we, that were earlier on in the day. So for instance, um, uh, the second talk, uh, the Australian gentleman, of, uh, of Len. Len, was talking about how, uh, he talked about the emotion of taking the photograph. He was talking about the experience of taking photographs, and that's really, really important. Photography is not just about the end product, the image, it's about everything that leads up to that image, and that's yours. So okay. you should go to those places. I, I, agree, I agree entirely with that, and, uh, uh, but a question I suppose I have for you uh, is, given that so much of the dissemination of photography is now via social media, mm. do you think that actually that, those images need to be disseminated, or would it be better if photographers disseminated images which were more strongly personal to them? Do you think, which would be healthier for photography? I guess my point is that, uh, that all the images are personal to you. Whether you disseminate them or not is a decision for each and every photographer to make. So if you, if you want to put up on your, uh, on your website or on your blog a picture of Yosemite or Yokosawan or whatever it might be, you should feel free to do so. You shouldn't feel constrained by the fact that there are 100,000 images of that before. If you want to take, uh, if you want to go to those places and try and take an individual interpretation, of course you want to try and do that. You should feel free to show whatever you want. It, it's not an either or. I don't think it's a bad thing for photography. Every generation needs to reinvent itself with photography and look at the places again and again and again. So just because someone, uh, there are lots of pictures that already exist of these places does not mean that we as individuals should not go and experience them and photograph them again. Okay. Dissemination was kind of the theme of, of your talk, in, yes. in a way, Karen. So you were talking about, um, I think a major point that you made was doing 15 exhibitions in 26 months was a very bad idea. And I would, given as, as somebody who's done two exhibitions in 15 years, I think I would entirely <laughs> agree with you on that one. Um, so, but you, you, you feel that it's important that, that photographers disseminate their images? I think for photographers who want to disseminate their images, they should be able to. I think photography is primarily a personal journey. And the, the taking of the photographs is about you and your subject. So if, in our case, obviously, it's landscape. So it's about you and the landscape and how you feel about that landscape. And if you only ever want to show your pictures to your mom and dad who will tell you how wonderful your work is, that's fabulous. You should do that. If you have a message that you want to put across and you think you need a wider audience for that, then you should definitely do that. And you shouldn't be put off by how much work it takes to put up an exhibition because they're a wonderful way to, to share your art, to share your message. There's, there's, there's an argument that says that, um, that the purpose of art if, if, if art can be said to have a purpose is, is to kind of enrich society and so there is an argument that says that if you consider what you do to be an artistic endeavour then actually it's beholden to you mm. to, to share that. Um, do you agree with that? I certainly feel that way personally. Yeah. Um, I love photography, I've been photographing since I was a, a child, it's something I did with my dad. But for me it's always been photography and the ability to use that message for whether it's positive social change or bringing enjoyment to a, a group of people or making people question things. I think that's important 
certainly for me. Yeah. And I think we would be a poorer place and a poorer world if we didn't have other people who felt the same way. But equally, you know, if you want to do a personal photographic project that's, that's so personal to you that you don't really want to share it, I think there's value in doing that too. It enriches you as a person. And you end up enriching the people around you. I, I, I always um, say to, um, to participants that the most important thing is, is, is your personal uh, journey. And a journey has become such a cliched thing in the last five, ten years, but it's something that I've been going okay to. It's okay to do cliche though. Well, apparently, <laughs> according to Tom, it is, yeah. But it's, it's something that I've been talking about for a long time. And, and because it's how it, it is how it enriches you. For me, photography is something that's completely changed my life because it's made me really look at things. And I'm not sure I would have done if I hadn't gone down the route of, uh, of uh, exploring a visual art. Now, young Alistair, the pinhole camera. Oh, this is a completely different way of looking at things. <laughs> Very slow way of looking at things yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, it is, for me, quite a, a contemplative exercise, really, because there's no way of... Uh, looking through a, uh, a viewfinder or anything like that, so you have to not quite guess, but you just it's like a claymore mine, you point it in the direction of the enemy <laughs> and uh, hope for the best really uh, and that's what it's, it's like uh, there's a lot of hit and miss in it, but for me it slows things down uh, Mark Littlejohn talked about being quite frenetic on the hillside, whereas for me, it might take me two hours to cover half a mile because I'm slowly plodding through the undergrowth going, that's interesting, that's interesting, deciding whether to take a shot or not, and then, more often than not, deciding to move on again. Uh, so, comes back to that word again, contemplation, contemplative. Uh, it just slows things down a heck of a lot for me. It's what somebody has disparagingly described as a point of hope. Photography, I think. Yes. But I, I, I really like the, the, the notion, and it, it goes back to the Holgers and all of those kind of cameras as well. But um, photographers, it seems to me, quite often try too hard to control every element of the process. Mm -hmm. And in the and, and in that uh, approach, that they uh, lose elements of creativity because they become too constrained about it has to be technically correct. I, I, absolutely. I mean. My pin for all photography is quite busy, but if you look at, uh, to name check, Paul Mitchell, he comes from a graphic design background, and you can see that in the shots that he takes, and I wouldn't say that they're simple shots, but they're very stylish, and uh, there's a lot to them, but at the same time, they're, they're simple at the same time, whereas I'm just busy all the time. Uh, <laughs> but, you, but, the, but the pinhole um, actually smooths some of that out, doesn't it? it? it, it it's it not, does. it's not as, it's not as um, fine grained because well, of the nature of the process. Uh, absolutely, and uh, your choice of film as well can help as well. So some of the shots I've used uh, to take and use a film called uh, FK Aura, which isn't created at made anymore because there's, there's a production line failure, and uh, the, it wasn't economical to reinstate the production line. It's an infrared film but it left this wonderful halo effect around things, so there's an aesthetic in that. Right. And then to move towards, uh, I used uh, Raleigh Infrared 400 film, which uh, is very stark. Uh, and the shots that I, sh I showed that were using infrared film uh, this afternoon were made using that, and it's a very stark, con high contrast type, type of infrared film. And it's got a different, different aesthetic to it. But it's also a kind of a link with what Colin was talking about in terms of your subjects, isn't it? Because you, you're both trying to actually uh, reveal something of the story of a place, the, the history of a, mm -hmm. of a landscape. And too often it seems to me that photographers look at a landscape as a, as a current thing, and they kind of try and ignore yeah. I think the background. I, I think that's. I think I'm a big believer that it, in order to tell a story, you have to kind of feel it first. You have to kind of understand the ebb and flow of the landscape. You know, you, you can go to a place, spend half an hour there, and take a photograph, and it's probably more likely to be the same photograph as other people take. And then, if you spend more time there and you kind of experience things and you see how things change, you can get a little bit more. Of the story, in in the way you present present the work, it gives you time to connect. I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that method of working is would work for everybody. You know, no. I, I, at Delamere, it's 150 meters or so. I've been there probably 50 or 60 times and spent two or three hours each time. I just kind of 
walk along the shoreline a bit, you know, move my head, you know. Um, I always think if anybody's actually watching me, <laughs> wonder, you know, I really generally wonder what they're thinking. And there's my, I treat it like the old Channel 4 logo thing where you've got a jumble of things and, you you know, you, you just want to see it from the right angle, you know. Yeah. And that's the way I kind of go about it, but I do, I do wonder well, I think if anybody's it, watching. And in a way, what, what we're all doing is trying to solve solve a visual puzzle. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. A, a rebus, and uh, and that that's been proven to give ev uh, you know humans pleasure. The solving yeah. of a puzzle, whether it's Sudoku or the Times crossword, or how yeah. to convert um, the multi-dimensional uh, realm, the visual realm, into a two-dimensional image is yeah. is a very satisfying thing. When it goes right, when it when it meets the criteria, the difference I think between something like Sudoku or the Times crossword or and, and a photograph is the photograph. There is no single. Well, there's no good right answer. Is there? No, there's no yeah. single good solution. Yeah. There are myriad yeah. solutions, um, and that's why, uh, returning to to Karen's um, kind of approach, the and yours as well, uh, the project approach. In fact, all three of you, the project approach is so good because it allows you to tell a story. It allows you to uh, to link images together and and make uh, a more directed. And you don't you don't know the story before you, you set out. You know that's no. why I do it. It's kind of you go with an open mind, see what happens, see what you notice from the last time you were there. And, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, like I say, you, you, often you can see like, Hodge Close is he, he's the most visual. Right. That there's a massive quarry. It's pretty easy to see what it is there. Yeah. The Thelma, it's a little more subtle. There's kind of the odd wall that you know has been there for two or three hundred years. That kind of disappears into the... Yeah, I'd never seen that um, that uh, image before of how it used to look like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I think it was taken 1818 or so, something right. like that. It's a really beautiful place, yeah. Um, and there was, yeah. there was a huge... I know there was a huge fuss about the uh, about the flooding of that, as there was about many valleys in the peaks and, yeah. and, in, and in Wales as well. Well, it could have been Oldswater. They, they were the two. It was Oldswater and Thelmay that they were kind of right. pondering between, you know. And there's a, there's a story in one of the books about... The, the people from Manchester Water Corporation went to Oldswater and decided to hike over to Helvellyn right. um, to kind of have a look at Thelmere. And they took a horse and a guide and got stuck on Helvellyn. And then they had to, you know, there was one chap who was described as being very portly and not very good on his feet. And, you think, and they, they ended up arriving at the King's Head pub in Thelmere one o'clock in the morning or something. They were trying to be secretive about it. Right. And of course, by the time they arrived there, the whole neighbourhood knew <laughs> what was going on. You know. <laughs> so is there anything that, uh, you know, the four of you have listened to each other's talks, is there anything that you have taken from uh, each other? So I'm going to start with you, Karen, from, from the other three talks. Is there something specifically that, or, or is there just stuff that chimes with what you already feel about photography? There were certainly um, things that chimed with what I feel about photography. I'm, I'm, I've been a project manager for 25 years, so if, you know the project approach is very natural to me. Um, it was really interesting to hear somebody talk about taking the cliche shot. <clears throat> I don't really worry too much about what people are going to say about the photographs that I take, because I take them primarily for myself. But it is nice to have somebody say, you know what, if you want to take another picture of Yosemite, knock yourself out. <laughs> so I thought that was really nice. The other thing for me is I've shot black and white for so many years now. I seek these beautiful color images and I think mm, some Velvia hey. maybe. <laughs> mm. Come over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Colin. Um, well both, I mean film photography is something that I've considered for a while. I, I'm, I wouldn't say that slow contempl contemplative approach is the domain solely of film photography but um, that's something that I definitely would think of looking at and, you know, looking at Alistair's approach, it really, you know, really makes me think even more about it, so we'll see about that. And also, I, I do agree that, you know, people should be allowed to take what they want, show what they want, there's, there's, um, there's kind of, you know, e each to their own, you know, I think that aspect of photography shouldn't be lost. Yeah. I'd echo that in so much as, for most of us here, present company excluded, we're amateurs, and uh, it is our hobby at the end of the day, so... Well, it's, it's my hobby as well. <laughs> then you win-win. Uh, I'm a bus driver by profession. <laughs> <laughs> my point is... <laughs> that 
But it's people's recreation, it's people's hobbies, so what they do with it, and as long as it keeps them happy and off the streets, then so be it. Let them enjoy it, let them get on with it. Like no, I, yeah, I, I fully, fully agree with that. And people worry too much about what's right and what's wrong, and really it's what's right or what's wrong for them, yeah. which brings, brings me back to you, Tom. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I mean, I guess what was fascinating listening to all three of you guys is, is, the, is the idea of um, a project which is very different from what I was talking about. So um, I love doing projects as well, of course. And, and I love doing projects in my locality. So I started off by saying, you know, of course there are great things that you can do because you have the time, you have the space, you can go back again, you can go 60 times back to photograph the same uh, little uh, lake and tree. Of course those are, are fantastic. They're very, very worthwhile. The only thing I wanted to do was flip that around and say, you know, it's not that, um, uh, the, the end product, if you go and photograph in Yosemite or wherever it may be, you know, it doesn't matter. It, it's still, it's personal to you and that's really important. We shouldn't get sniffy about these places and start getting slightly snobbish because so many people have now been to Yokosal and that another person going to Yokosal and is yet another picture of it. That is very, that's a dangerous slope because what that means is that it's been done by one person and they are always been done a lot and therefore they're in some way superior because they've already done it and, and I think we just need to make sure we keep that out photography photography is not just about the photograph photography is about the whole experience right from the beginning about going out experiencing the landscape in whatever format that might be on a workshop or through a, a, a project having fun, enjoying it, touching uh, metaphorically and physically with the landscape and enjoying it and whatever comes out of that comes out of it. And it's yours, you should keep it, it's precious to you. And that's what I wanted to say. One final thing just to say for, for me is that whilst you're still talking about projects, there is absolutely value in the single image as well. Mm -hmm. The single image can hold its own perfectly well and doesn't have to be part of a body no, no, it doesn't have to, and, I, and I've never produced a project, so. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much indeed for joining me for this discussion uh, post your lightning talks.